Hello, my name is Ross and welcome to our new channel, Viral Crypto. In today's video, I will be covering a basic understanding of Bitcoin via the first principles method. So, what is the first principles approach? Well, this approach is all about understanding something from the ground up. What are the most essential characteristics of something that you're looking at and then you go from there? For example, when cars were first invented, people were very skeptical because they thought horses were already the most ideal transportation medium. Now, if the inventor of the car, Carl Benz, had listened to all his peers at the time, we'd all still be riding horses today. Now, if you look at it from a first principles approach, however, you'd realize that transportation is simply getting something from point A to move to point B. Whether it has four legs or four wheels is irrelevant, right? So to understand first principles of money, you need to ask yourself this question. What makes money valuable? Think about that for a moment. There are many reasons, but I'll be focusing on these few. Scarcity, divisibility, durability, validity, and incentivized security. The last point isn't really under the first principles of money, but it's an important point when we talk about Bitcoin. Firstly, let's talk about scarcity. Now, in order to understand the value behind money, we need to understand scarcity. Scarcity basically refers to the supply of something. If there's a lot of something, then it's not scarce. If there's less of something, that means it's scarce. It's a lot harder to find, right? Now, our current financial system doesn't really fit the first principle very well these days. Why? Because governments can print money in a theoretically unlimited supply. Hence, doesn't really have the typical scarcity that we should be having as a first principle. Instead, let us think back earlier to olden days when they used gold as a medium of exchange. Now, think about it. Why is gold valuable? Well, people often say because it's scarce, it's rare, you don't find gold everywhere. Even this, although it looks like gold, is not really gold, right? Now, you might say that gold is being mined every day. So isn't the supply increasing? Now, yes, that's true. But for the past many years, gold has increased at a very slow and predictable supply rate. Hence, it's still considered quite scarce. Certainly a lot more scarce than, for example, grains of sand on a beach. Imagine for a moment if you could use grains of sand as payment for goods and services. There's so much sand on earth, it would be an oversupply and that would make it value less, right? Now, is Bitcoin scarce? Think about that. Yes, it is! At the time of writing, around 18 million Bitcoins have already been mined and are in circulation. But the maximum amount of Bitcoins in the world will always be 21 million only. This has been algorithmically coded into the Bitcoin protocol, right? So you can never have an unlimited supply of Bitcoin. They're only ever going to be 21 million. Secondly, let's talk about divisibility. Now, in order for any money to work as a good medium of exchange, it must be divisible. The divisibility of any monetary system should account for the variability of goods and services offered in that region. For example, in Malaysia, if you wanted to buy, let's say, oh, a water bottle, right? It probably costs you about one ringgit, right? But if, let's say, you want to buy some sweets, they would probably be worth about 50 cents. So you would need a smaller amount of money to do it. This piece of note could easily buy me this bottle of water. But what if it was some sweets? I would need to divide it further into a 50 cent coin. Now, in Malaysia, the currency is divisible all the way from a 100 ringgit note to a 1 ringgit note to even coins like 50 cents, 20 cents, 10 cents, and even 5 cents, right? So this makes it easier for customers to pay more easily, right? For a variety of goods and services. Fiat money is rather divisible, but gold is not, right? If you have a gold bar worth $1,000, right? It would be a lot harder to pay for a bottle of water if you think about it, right? How could you pay for a bottle of water with a gold bar? You'd have to cut it up into $1,000 parts just to get one dollar to buy the gold buy a bottle of water right or maybe scrape off some gold dust so as you can see gold would not be a suitable system of payment because it's not very divisible money is but what about bitcoin is bitcoin divisible yes it is guess what bitcoin is divisible up to eight decimal places remember bitcoin although i'm using a physical coin to represent it is actually digital right so we have to think in digital terms fun fact Bitcoin can be divided up to eight decimal places as I mentioned. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the smallest unit of Bitcoin is known as a Satoshi. Have you heard of that word? So for example, if you were to write in Bitcoin terms, 0 
one that is considered one Satoshi, right? So this is like, you know, I can't divide this further, but digitally, I can divide it by eight decimal places, right? So that proves that Bitcoin is divisible. Next, let's talk about durability. In order for money to be effective, it needs to last through time. Now, for example, imagine if all of us used banana leaves as currency instead of gold bars or paper. After paying for services with a banana leaf, it would start to decompose and altogether disappear once they break down, right? Or imagine if we use fish as currency. After a few days, it would start to stink and nobody wants smelly, rotten money. Right? Now, gold suits this principle of durability very well because gold is non-reactive. The same gold bar that you got 100 years ago would probably look the same 100 years from now. Right? That's why precious metals like gold and silver were often used for coins because they're very durable. They last for a long time. But again, metals are very heavy to carry and so not very suitable for day-to-day -day transactions. That is when people invented, ta-da, paper currency. Another word for paper currency is fiat currency, right? It's what we use as default, right? Now, paper currency fulfilled the durability part because, you know, the paper that they use is fairly durable and because it's also very light, so that makes it very portable. It's much easier to carry around, right? Now, the thing is, gold can technically still be destroyed and money can also be damaged. I know I've left it in my pants pocket by accident. It's gone in the washing machine, right? What about Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin durable? Yes, it is. Remember, Bitcoin is fully digital, so the records are updated every second online. It's extremely durable. As long as the internet exists, we will always have Bitcoin. Eh? Because it's digital. Also, when you think about it, because it's digital, it's completely weightless. You can't feel the weight of Bitcoin. The only thing you need to carry is your smartphone. Next, let's talk about validity. Now, if I gave you a piece of gold, how would you know if it's actual gold or fake gold? Let me tell you a story. I once bought a gold set of playing cards. You can see it over here. Right? The cards. Whoa, it's really shiny as well. Look at that, all right? So now when I bought this set, it claimed on the website that these were gold plated, right? With a very thin layer of gold. But I wasn't sure, I was rather skeptical. So I brought it to the gold shop nearby my house. And the staff informed me that in order for them to verify it, they would need to scrape off a tiny little piece and do some tests in the lab to make sure that it's real gold, right? And doing those tests would be more expensive than buying the cards themselves. So I didn't bother doing so, right? This is one of the problems with gold, for example. Verifying it as a valid piece of gold is costly. It's not so easy, right? Fiat currency, on the other hand, has a bit of an advantage here because paper money has inbuilt security features which are visible to the naked eye. For example, in a Malaysian money, right, if you hold it up to the light, you can't really see on the camera, but I'm sure you guys have seen it before, you can actually see a shadow or the picture of the king, right? So that's something that obviously a normal printer can't do. In fact, you can even put it under UV light and then you'll see some special materials that actually glow, right? So this is not something that you can forge or counterfeit on a normal printer machine. Hence, making this piece of money secure and valid, right? You can easily check. Now, again, proving its validity completely is a bit time consuming, right? If you're still skeptical, you would need to go to the central bank and make sure that this really is what it claims to be. What about Bitcoin? Bitcoin is based on a public ledger database technology known as the blockchain. Now, this system guarantees that it's virtually impossible to create a fake Bitcoin. Now, the finer details of the blockchain and how it validates Bitcoin will be discussed in a future video on this channel. But for now, just keep this in mind that Bitcoin is digitally validated and cannot be counterfeited. The last point is about incentivized security. Now, this isn't part of the typical first principles of money. Instead, it's one of the unique features that Bitcoin has. Imagine for a moment if I gave you a printer that could print money almost just as good as the central bank. If you gave anyone a note from the central bank and a note from your printer, it'd be almost exactly the same and nobody apart from an expert would be able to tell the difference. Here's the question. Would you start printing money on your own for free? Would you? Would you? Now, you don't have to answer that question. But honestly, if it was me, I would find it very hard to resist the temptation. Who doesn't want to print free money, right? Now, why would you do that? You know that it's wrong, but what's to stop you from doing it? Well, the reason why is because there's no incentive for you not to do it, right? Anyone who wants more money would just print it freely, right? Which is why it's not so easy to print money.
What about Bitcoin? How does Bitcoin protect itself? Well, the interesting thing about Bitcoin is that in the process of validating every Bitcoin transaction, the system actually rewards participants, right? These participants are known as miners who are directly involved with the processing of every transaction. Every time a Bitcoin transaction comes in, ching, the miner gets rewarded, right? With Bitcoin. Hence, if processing a transaction makes Bitcoin more valid and processing it also rewards miners with more Bitcoin, therefore miners are incentivized to ensure that the Bitcoin network is always running and the longer it runs, the stronger the network becomes. This creates a positive feedback loop, right? Which benefits both parties, the end user like you and me, because we can rest assured knowing that the Bitcoin that we transact with is all genuine. And it benefits the miners as well because they get rewarded for keeping the system running. I think if fiat currency had this system, there would be a lot less corruption in the financial world because people would be more incentivized to keep things secure. All right, so let's recap what we've learned so far. Firstly, the first principles approach is about understanding the basic elements of something and then working our way up from there. When it comes to the first principles of money, in some areas, money and gold do pretty well. But in some areas, money and gold fall short. I would like to argue that Bitcoin actually fulfills all the first principles of money much better than fiat currency and gold. Let me explain why. First up is scarcity as we saw earlier. Bitcoin is scarce because it has a limited supply. Money theoretically has an unlimited supply because it can be printed as much as governments want. Secondly is divisibility. Bitcoin is divisible up to eight decimal places. Gold, as you guys know, is not easily divisible because it's usually in the form of a single piece, right? Dividing gold up would mean cutting it and that will require a lot of cost. Durability. Bitcoin is durable and can last pretty much forever as long as the internet exists. Gold and money, although fairly durable as well, can be damaged over time. What about validity? How do I know my Bitcoin is true? Well, every Bitcoin is validated by its own network using cryptography and cannot be counterfeited. Money and gold, however, can be forged. Lastly, in addition to fulfilling all the other first principles of money, Bitcoin has an additional unique feature which I think makes it very special. It rewards participants for maintaining the integrity of the Bitcoin network. Hence, everyone who participates in Bitcoin wants to continue keeping it secure. So, if you're interested in investing and owning a piece of the future of money, then I've got some good news for you. You can easily participate in the financial revolution. All you need to do is to download the Luno app. Luno is the first cryptocurrency exchange to get licensed and regulated in Malaysia. So you're safe to use it. Once you've downloaded it, go to the reward section and type in this special reward code, CDR3Q. Once you've done that, you can start depositing and buying cryptocurrency. If you purchase a minimum of 250 ringgit of any cryptocurrency, you'll receive a 25 ringgit reward of Bitcoin. But just make sure you key in the code CDR3Q before you make any deposit or purchase. Thanks for watching this video on the first principles of money and Bitcoin. If you found this video informative, do share it with your friends and family so they can benefit too. Once again, a quick disclaimer that nothing in this video should be constituted as financial advice. You are responsible for your own financial choices. At Viral Crypto, we seek to educate you about cryptocurrency so that you can make more informed decisions. Do help us out by liking, commenting and subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon to stay up to date with our latest educational videos in the world of cryptocurrency. Remember to follow our social media links below to receive updates as well. Until next time guys, may the Bitcoin be with you.